And so moved. Second. Uh, do we have any citizen communication? Okay. Uh, so the next thing is chair and vice chair. Brian and I have appreciated being your chair and vice chair so, so very much, but we don't want to hog this opportunity. So we would like to put it out to the other members of our committee. So if any of either of the two of you would like to step in and be chair or vice chair, this would be your opportunity. Solid. Nancy, can you hear us? No. Can the people online hear the committee room? Okay. okay. That was a yes. Thank you. Can come Paul hear us? Okay, so. I think we have to be nominated and then voted on. So nominate. I'm going to nominate Brian for vice chair. Did an amazing job. Right. <laughs> Done a nice. The hat you wear it well. So I mean, we need to vote. Who else want to do it? We have to vote. Okay, well, I know. I was hoping somebody else would do it. So, okay. Um, you got to call a vote. I, I'm uh, looking for a vote. Oh. Nominated. Are you, are you opposed? Oh. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Thank Raising you, that much, this much political power. And I'm <laughs> going to nominate Lynn for our chair. You just said you wanted to do it. <laughs> Run unopposed. <laughs> <laughs> Second. Oh my gosh, you're going to be chair. That's so fantastic. Unless you want me to do it. Do it. Do it. Thank you. We have to have a vote. Please. Well, I mean, I want to vote it. I want to make sure he wants to do it over you. Or do you want it? Uh, well, he didn't actually want to be on the committee. Yeah, that's up until I just browbeat him into doing it. Well, I mean, he'll have to put in it. In and I'll review it and see if he meets the qualifications. Okay. We, need a chair. we need a nomination and, and a vote on a chair. Okay, great. So, if you, yeah, if he's okay doing it, I'll vote in the affirmative. And just do the schedule. You want to do this one? Oh, I'm sure glad you were picking and now you're doing the big chair. I think I've done it. <clears throat> yeah, you yeah. started in 2015, you were an excellent chair. 14, 15, 16. No, it started in 15, 14, 15. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 15, 16, 14, 15. Congratulations. Hey. Here's the schedule. Okay. Got a vote. Oh, Lynn. Vote. A second. Okay. Lynn's in. Any opposed? Okay. Good have. Congratulations. So, our updates. From the city, is this when he's doing his dog and pony, or is he new business down below? Yeah, I can provide some updates from the planning department. Just one second. Do you want to be vice chair? If you want, we've already. I'm I'm okay with whatever. Take care. Okay. Later. So listen, Bunny, and I don't have to work. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, so the food cart pod permit application will be heard by the Planning Commission um, a week from today, July 28th. Um, and again, that's a food cart pod uh, with connections for 11 food carts plus a 2100 square foot uh, dining hall slash tap room. That's going to be great. Um, we're going to schedule soon a pre-op for a 36 lot subdivision, which would be an extension of Huser Lane. Um, and that's for a uh, 36 lot single family subdivision. Uh, we received our second submittal for the Healthy Smiles uh, new dental clinic application. So I assume that's going to be in pretty good shape. The first one was, was in good shape. So we'll probably deem that complete soon. Let's see, we have the 
phase three final plat in for review for the Columbia Commerce Center. So that is under review by staff now. Uh, the subdivision, the planned development subdivision referred to as Buxton Ranch, which is the property south of Veterans Park, um, is nearing completion. That application will be deemed complete soon and scheduled for a planning commission and city council review. The city submitted a grant application on uh, July 14th to Business Oregon, and that would be for uh, $60,000 for additional funding to um, cover some analysis that we're adding uh, related to the update, updated floodplain mapping. And that's um, on the east side of the city, and it's um, involving the Scapoose Improvement um, uh, drainage districts, uh, recertification of the levy. <clears throat> and then let's see, we have a lot going on with the 50 year plan. Um, we will be discussing the economic opportunities analysis draft at two upcoming meetings. So I did want to invite this committee formally to attend those stakeholder advisory committee meetings when we discuss this topic. Um, and those meetings would be held August 9th and November 1st, and you'll have more information sent to you on that. But essentially, this entire committee, we would invite to attend those, um, those committee meetings, which happen on Tuesday nights from 6 to 8. But again, we will send you that formal invitation, but I wanted to give you a heads up that we would love to have this committee's input on that process. Um, we already go. It's in this room. Yeah. Most of us already go. <laughs> Most of you already go. Yep. But we'll extend the invitation to the rest of the committee members. So oh, you get to come to the meeting. We do appreciate uh, everyone who has been part of that committee. It's it's going really well. Um, I think that's it for the city side. We do have, uh, yeah, Chris will, will talk about the streetlight des design as part of 4.1. Okay. Lori, I do have an update. Sure. So at uh, last city council meeting, the city council meeting, the council did approve expending $9,000 of the ARPA funds for an aftercare program in conjunction with the school district and the YMCA of Columbia Willamette Valley. $9,000. We did place a couple of conditions that they're going to move forward and that if for whatever reason they shut it up within two years that any equipment purchased would be go back into either the care of this school or the city so that a future program could use the equipment. So they needed $9,000 just as a startup. So we went ahead and used ARPA funds for that. Their, their ideal amount of students is 30 students is where it's kind of their break even number the starting the school year kindergarten through eighth grade. The cost, and it's probably going to be mostly non-members out here because we don't have a Y out here, but for a member, it'd be $340 a week for their kid to be in this after care program and 380. And the YMCA does have financial assistance programs. So we felt it was a very good use of a small number of dollars to really help a huge need in the count in the, in the city. So a week. Yeah, it's a week. I think it's a week. No, month per month. Sorry, three forty a month. <laughs> That's cheap. Big, huge difference. Well, daycare is more like that a week. Oh, after care. That's right. after school care. Yeah. Okay. So, to gap people, you know, people that work out of town now have a place safe where their kids can be until they get home. Was that nine thousand their number, or was that a compromise? It was their number. It was their number, just to like a locker and startup equipment they would need for the program to get the program up and going, and then from there on out their resources would pay for the people and future, future supply. So we thought it was, I mean, literally huge need in the community and low cost entry. Yeah, it's a good bang for the buck. Yeah. Uh, he said is, Paul is not here, but he did send me his update. So I'll go over these updates um, of his email. Let's see, we're promoting the city's urban renewal and business development grant, encouraging businesses to apply. Uh, Congresswoman Bonamici's request for 814000 for planning and design for an advanced additive of a small business incubator at OMIC has been included and ready for vote, and it could come as early as August. Uh, they also have asked the city for some ARPA money, 110000 
space. Um, so again, promoting small business in part the incubator for City of Scappoos, so fantastic. Um, yeah, the 110,000 is for an incubator for metals additive companies that would want to an outgrowth of the metal additives building that they're building. So it would be really con taking really what the vision of OMIC is, is find those little businesses that might start up. There's hundreds of them in Sheffield, litter all around. Just, they discover something and they sell it. Fantastic. Uh, is it not Seaset anymore? It's just Set? Yeah, kind of. I like CSET so much better. Um, also partnered with OMIC on its application to be designated a center of innovation excellence through the Business Oregon, which would provide strategic planning and program funding beneficial to the incubator and other OMIC and PCP OMIC initiatives. Um, Danson's, perhaps, the fastest growing pellet grill company with multiple brands, has completed its purchase of the Armstrong property, also known as St. Helens Manufacturing Complex in St. Helens. Land use and permitting processes are underway. Pellet manufacturing in the first phase of production development will employ approximately 60 people. And the company is looking to relocate its Puget Sound distribution facility to the site as well, perhaps doubling the job count. Uh, CSET is, or set. Currently is working with a major food growing company for the Rainier area, actively working with five other manufacturing companies, either site here or expand here. New Small Business Development Center, Director Jason Moon, are up and operating and more than two dozen clients already. Keep It Local is targeting September to roll out a new website with comprehensive business directory countywide. Additionally, digital learning series from digital media basics to websites, marketing, and other topics to begin this fall. He expresses his apologies for not being able to attend. And with that, Mr. Garrett. Um, well, it's the Columbia County Fair right now, so that's exciting. Um, your rodeo tonight, uh, rodeo for day, so everybody should that. It's for sure. Um, a lot of people volunteer to make that happen that this week. Um, fairgrounds, we actually just got a grant for a new a pool building and um, re-roofing. Um, a new thing, hospital study starts officially in August. Big process, if uh, and to pursue a certificate of need after that process is done. Um, anybody's guess? Plenty of guesses out there. Our uh, John Gum Court Facilities renovations are still design development phase. We're trudging along. Um, uh, some somewhat nasty budget figures on the schematic um, pricing set for John Gum. Uh, this last meeting we had with our uh, design team. Um, so we're kind of doing value engineering. And um, are they starting with either legacy or OHSU the study process? That is one of our problems. Let's go around is find those as sponsors or as related parties or not to be hostile to each other. Yeah. Or peace out, yeah. There, right now we're working on being together that's going to work up to have a representative. Um, it, yeah. um, a lot of it's mean right now, also, all the numbers and there's a lot of accounting. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a real pro league football. When it's um, but there's there's a whole lot to figure out that's yet other than. Got to start. Uh, is Heidi here today? Can't see. Nobody from the PUD is here. 
is here. Oh, Jeff. So it's summer. We're doing summer reading. We've got 470 kids signed up so far on that. And because it's summer reading, that means there's a kids program literally every day of the week except Monday and Sunday. Wow. So that keeps everybody pretty busy. Um, so waiting on the city to install the bottle filler in the park. Uh, we've got movies in the park starting on first Friday of August. Um, Police will be doing hot dogs and hamburgers at every night um, as a way to meet and greet the new police chief. Um, we've got a new screen that's as big as the gazebo. And we have uh, live entertainment on the three nights. The first night's going to be centered around first responders. And then the next three nights, we've got um, Aaron Nigel Smith, who is nominated for a Grammy this year, playing on the second. Friday and uh, Big River Big Band on the third and uh, Medieval group for, uh, on the fourth night because that's Princess Bride, so it goes along with that. Oh, perfect. Love a theme. Um, so let's talk about Adventure Fest. I'm going to give you a check. Uh, I have handouts for everybody. Oh. Got one already. Christine's already donated. Len escaped on Tuesday night before I could get to it. <laughs> you wrote a check. That's for county check. council. Thank you, Christine. Thank you. Uh, I don't have one. I'd recommend the axe throwing. All the kids. The though, the kids doesn't are doing. Thank you. It's a lot of fun. So we're looking, of course, for donations because um, the city's paying for this. Oh, and don't let the $750 minimum donation dissuade you. They will take other sums. <laughs> take any kind of money for you. Yeah, give it you to know, Greg. So, Jeff, uh, how many... Do you know how many sponsors they currently have? Uh, actual big money sponsors, we have two. Yeah. You say when you say big money sponsors, what do you mean? I'm we, thinking or more. Those have written a check. More than more than two thousand. Oh, two thousand, so big ones. Okay. So we've got P the uh, uh, PUD and um um Port. Port. and Christine. Oh. Welcome. Number three. So, a little bit of this last meeting, big companies in this community seem to participate in it. This seems to be a, be a pretty idyllic thing to be doing. And so far, they've refused. Refused? Yes. You call them? Yes. Contacted most of the folks from last year at the 100 year and some new companies that we didn't, uh, most of the larger groups, and we have been denied. I, almost everybody. Is somebody Wanna? cheerful and very persuasive. Cascades did not participate last year. Um, they were a no. They didn't return my call. What about Omic? Has Omic? Oh, what, what, Wab was a no. It was Mark's a no. UCC. Red Meyer. Red Meyer gave us a gift card after twisting their arm last year, so we're not really inclined to go back because they're only giving us money. I have the gift card for supplies, which we don't need. Um, I mean, the list goes. I know that the high school got a lot of sponsors and donations for the football field, mostly from individuals, but also they're tied to a company or yep. a small business or something. I think that might be public knowledge online. You could find those list of people, but it's interesting why. Matt Kessie, yeah. Eric Anderson. <laughs> did, did Derek finally? There were, there, no, there were six fifty thousand dollars donations. Derek finally, uh, told me. Yeah. Derek finally donated something back to the schools. He gets but, something back, he has those like camps. Impacted. It was because of that. They said, well, we gave this, so we can't do anything. Quite a, quite a few of the folks who gave larger last year had said that they were already maxed out on the contributions. You give me a last I'll call. Uh, I move on to the next one. Yeah. Okay. I didn't want to steal your thunder. Oh, Mick, you're up, brother.
Let's see. Uh, construction seems to still be going pretty well. We are uh, probably going to be running about a month uh, behind schedule on the major construction. Uh, it seems like there's a huge shortage of electrical panels nationwide um, that's really affecting us. Things on a 300 day construction schedule, we had main electrical panels that were projected out 420 days. So um, uh, we're now looking to open the new facility prob or gain uh, full occupancy of the facility probably late October, early November is the, uh, is the timeline that we're looking at. Um, we are going to start moving machines and equipment into that facility before then. Um, we have several large machines, some of them already on boats that cannot be stopped or turned around at this point. So um, they, uh, we told them we need to polish at least a little bit of floor to set the crates down. Um, and once we have power, we'll be able to install those uh, pieces of uh, machines and equipment. Um, uh, we're starting to see a lot more investment from companies uh, coming to OMIC in terms of projects. Um, NWI Defense, a major defense contractor, uh, is working with us. Loophold Manufacturing is now working with us. Entech Manufacturing out of Albany is working with us. Um, we are starting up projects uh, with uh, the National Energy Technology Laboratory, Nettle, uh, under the DOE down in Albany, uh, and uh, several more. We have ongoing projects for Boeing and others. So uh, with that, we uh, are still full up on work um, out through the end of the year at least. Uh, because of that, we're going to be looking at expanding staff from 10 to 17, not including contractors, um, this fiscal year. And... Um, other things of importance, uh, National Manufacturing Day is October 7th this year. Uh, with uh, uh, The goal is, and we've called the original team back from 2019 to help out with this effort, we're looking to pull at least 400 students from 12 school districts um, into, uh, into PCC's facility, which can handle, we're guessing, about 50 in our facility. Um, we were hoping to be able to lead students through the additive center and have that available for manufacturing day to show students uh, 3D printers and those kinds of machines. But unfortunately, because of the construction so behind schedule, I don't think we're going to be able to accomplish that. So at some point, I'm going to start asking what permits and things do I need to make this thing happen um, uh, in terms of having that many people at an event. Um, uh, mentioned previously, that uh, $814,000 planning grant is uh, in its uh, final stages. Um, with that, that will be, uh, uh, we'll be looking to do um, engineering and architecture on a, an approximate 45,000 square foot facility on our campus. Um, that will focus on uh, incubators and accelerating companies as well as knowledge transfer. Uh, with that, we're hoping to put an auditorium in there, classrooms, as well as space for incubators and accelerators to function on our property. Uh, we already have one uh, currently operating on our property. Uh, Root Foundation is a company that does um, mobile or uh, quick place foundations for uh, uh, solar panels uh, for cattle fields, uh, agrivoltaics, but for cattle fields where cows like to run into um, uh, solar panels. It's not good for them. So uh, they are testing for about six months now, um, heavily um, uh, sponsored by uh, um, uh, several federal organizations, all energy trusts and, and of such, you know, such nature. OMEP's involved in that one. Uh, we're likely going to be seeing another one uh, come out of Autodex, Autodesk's Pi um, uh, consortium, and they're going to be looking at doing 3D printed construction blocks um, so they're going to make the actual molds for the concrete out of uh, 3D printing and then do some kind of fibrous uh, fill construction block and uh, get those fully certified for construction applications and do some printing and little building of some sort uh, on our property. Um, we, just, uh, um, we just received word uh, yesterday that our partners in Texas got a $5 million um, grant from the your, uh, uh, budget from the Department of Energy, uh, or not, not the Department of Energy, the Department of Defense. Part of that uh, $5 million will come to OMIC for workforce development. So we're gonna be working on workforce development efforts uh, in combination with, uh, in that, with them. Um, that will hopefully open us up to a, an approximately $60 million opportunity in October to December of this year. Um, to look at uh, 
starting several large research projects um, at our facility, which will include capital equipment and staff uh, above and beyond that 17 I mentioned earlier. Um, and um, uh, with Business Oregon, we have submitted our um, Business Oregon put out in their 2021 plant um, that they wanted uh, centers of innovation excellence. Um, of course, we applied for one. The idea behind these centers of innovation excellence were based upon us um, for other fields. And so we applied to uh, gain that title within the state of Oregon and uh, our, our application is in even though the whole system is based off of us. How's the have. internships going? Uh, currently we have 14 high school students um, and we have uh, six, uh, six students, uh, three from Oregon Tech who are in their uh, first, uh, going into their first year of mechanical and manufacturing engineering degrees. Uh, so they're there at our uh, facility for this summer. And we have uh, four, uh, four students from Oregon State University. Two of them are undergraduates and two of them are graduate students. And they are going through um, uh, at the same time doing internships at our facility, uh, learning uh, metals manufacturing, additive manufacturing. Uh, within the first week, they get to know us and we get to know them. And then we kind of pair them with the researchers that best match their interests. They start taking on and working on uh, research projects with us. Are they local to this area or where are they staying? Uh, the four students from uh, from Oregon, Oregon State, um, we had to find temporary housing for two of them. One of them drives from an hour away from their parents. And another one drives, I think one of them, another one is semi-local. Of the um, of the Oregon Tech students, um, I think two of them found housing with family somewhere near, and then the other is um, uh, one of the uh, uh, high school students I ended up working with last year on the uh, Scapoose Robotics team, a kid by the name of Cole, um, and uh, the, all the high school students are local. Thank you, hmm? Thank you for coming. Yeah. Uh, the next person, I don't, is PCC, we don't have PCC sure. anymore. And Nancy. Nancy. Can you hear me? I can. I'm sorry, I turned my camera off and now I can't get it back on, but that's, I think you can, I think you can uh, do just fine just listening to me. I, uh, the Port of Columbia County held their first of, we hope, many events last night, uh, community conversations. And this one was based around rail. And we actually had four big hitters from both Genesee, Wyoming, which is the parent company of PNW, which is the line that services Columbia County. And uh, it, it was really helpful in understanding they were very open and uh, forthright about what it takes to run this short line. And they are kind of experts in short lines. They own over a hundred short lines around the country. And PNW um, being just one of those over hundred. They move people around within their organization a lot. It's kind of like being in the military. Every person of the four that attended last night were uh, a year or less with Genesee, Wyoming in the current capacity that they're holding. For instance, the general manager of PNW, whose office is based in Corvallis, has been with them just at a year now. They're all very young. They're all, um, and by that I don't mean they're 14, but they're young people. They have um, they have a way of interfacing with the community that was really disarming uh, and, and very uh, appreciated. They answered all the questions very directly to the best of their ability and not everyone uh, you know, appreciated what they heard, but I think everyone felt that what they were hearing was was very honest and very true. So we're hoping that we're now establishing a new relationship, uh, not just the port, but everyone in the community. We did have other community members that attended, which was very helpful, and I'm so sorry that it conflicted with 
your meeting um, also, but um, hopefully next time we'll do a better job of scheduling. We are looking for uh, topics to discuss at these uh, community meetings. We're thinking we'll probably hold uh, four or five of them a year. So if you have any burning topics, they don't necessarily have to be aimed at the port, but they need to be aimed at things that people in our community care about. Uh, the other item is uh, we have a new tenant at the airport. Uh, I'm so sorry, I don't remember their name, but they are uh, manufacturers of drones. And to be clear, they will not be testing these drones anywhere in Columbia County. All their testing will be outside. But we're very pleased to have a new tenant at the airport. We still do not have a new tenant for the, our state of the art building. So, um, Christine, I'm sure if you make a few phone calls, you can take care of that for us. We'd really appreciate it. Whatever I can do for you, Nancy, whatever I can do. <laughs> I knew that. I knew that would be the answer. And uh, finally, uh, we actually have decided that it might be a really good idea to have big signs that people can see advertising the um, properties that we have available for lease. So you'll be seeing some great big beautiful new signs being uh, uh, put up around the airport, uh, listing information about the uh, buildings that we have for lease there, as well as all our other properties around the county. And I am sorry to say that I will be leaving this meeting early to jump on another Zoom, but really appreciate being here today. And congratulations, Lynn. Look forward to your leadership. Thanks, Nancy. With that, we are moving on to our very own city engineer for number 4.1, downtown overlay streetlight design. Are you coming forward? So excited to have you here. Thank you so much for coming. We have a light for him. Yes, test. It works. All right, well. Thanks for um, adding this topic to your agenda. Of course. Um, I've been um, trying to get some traction on uh, some lighting that everybody would be happy with in the downtown core. And um, you know, just just get you know, get it updated. We're 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 having a few projects. We'll be having a few projects that would involve new lighting in the core area. And so it'd be nice to have a standard that everybody's so there's an example of what we have. We currently have. So um, we'll talk about um, talk. We'll give you a little background. I, I'll, I'll just briefly touch on that. It's um, go into a lot of detail there, but uh, we'll talk about some planning code requirements. Where the where those downtown overlay requirements apply. Um, we'll talk specifically about the code of lighting and uh, and then we'll talk about our current light standard and a little bit about the IES standards which are more of the technical specifications for lighting then some next steps so this is coming to this committee as the economic development committee because this will help stimulate economic growth for our city we we think it will Oh, okay. We're going to talk about that. I, I know that a lot of businesses, when they come into community communities, they look for like what kind of lighting do they have. Well, in particular, I think people pay attention to it more in, during the holidays. There's a lot of stuff that communities are doing with lighting during the holidays, and, and even in the summer. If, if you drive around to some of the older downtown cores, you'll notice hanging baskets and uh, be lovely banners, yeah. some things like that. And could also the presence of light. Uh, make the area a little safer so it brings in companies or they feel more comfortable having a business there yeah. safety aspects to it and just keeping it and having consistent lighting and then there's you know there's a lot of uh, down lighting up lighting concerns so dark sky concepts we won't get into that today but um some more there, there's there's a lot of benefits and and, it, and and for the city it was always lighting was always kind of an afterthought in terms of projects because the, the Columbia River PUD doesn't 
they don't take responsibility for designing those. Um, uh, lighting for us, it's they don't do whatever we want. So, um, so yeah, so we're trying to we're trying to move it into the 21st century and and in what people really want. So the 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 kind of the basis for this comes out of the, the comp plan. Um, it outlines goals and policies. Um, among those, one of the policies is for commercial land designation, which includes the following ten goals. Highlighted the goal in particular. Um, everybody see that okay? Preservation, improvement, expansion, renewal of existing of the city's existing business district and implement adopted downtown Scapu's plan supporting existing business districts in its role as a center of economic and civic activity for the entire community. It's kind of the most applicable goal there. Um, from that, uh, we in our development code under chapter 17.0, we have um, the Defined area that hatch. It's kind of read, but basically East Columbia, um, Northwest, and, and Southeast First on the west side, then same on the east, Northeast First, Southeast First on the east side of the highway. And it and it it does spill over into the side streets in a few places, unblocked north and east. See that, which is a very so. Th this is this is the all of the code in its entirety for lighting in the downtown overlay, and it talks about heights. Um, it talks about a little bit about some light standards. Um, is exit lighting. On architectural focal points and landscape features is encouraged. Seasonal lighting is encouraged. There's some there's some language in there about having something a little bit different in those areas. So I don't know exactly where we started with this acorn that we have now, but I know that there was one particular project that kind of kicked it off, and. It, it was the old town center project right across the street here on East Columbia and Southeast Second Street. Um, they proposed this acorn light mm -hmm. from Sun Valley Lighting, um, which really became our de facto state. Actually, it wasn't me. It was Lorelei Village. Lorelei had that. And you were trying to copy Lorelei Village. I was told to copy them. <laughs> I don't know where that one came from. He, he, he got a discount. For being the first in the area, because the manufacturer realized that it would probably become the standard, and 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 then once he did it, then it became the standard. You're right, and so I think Lorelei Village happened before Brian Vericchioni was here, and so it really got memorialized when Brian Vericchioni, my my sort of my predecessor on your project, and then that 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 kind of yeah uh, in our details. So. That's kind of where um, the very first picture you saw. That's that's essentially what. The, so this is the light we are using. That's the current. That's the light you see in this downtown area. Um, it has a little uh, receptacle at the bottom. It has these not decorative arms. They really aren't. Don't serve any real purpose. They're just decorative. We put prints on them. I uh, no. I wouldn't put anything on them. Need to be engineered. Yes, they would actually have to be engineered. Um, they're not really you can call them banner arms because you need two on each side for a banner. Otherwise, they'll be flapping in the breeze. I didn't. I can't see the height of that. I can't see the little number from the ground to the little arm. It's Twelve. So to the top of the post, from the base to the top of the post is twelve feet. That dimension. I think it's ten feet to the the hanging the basket holder. Again, they're not even though. And it I thought it wasn't a basket holder. And then the globe is, is three feet. So they labeled it basket holder, but you can't put anything on it. No. Put an empty basket, maybe. 
Yeah, they styrofoam basket with nothing. So, so the history was that there was talk of do we have those arms or not, and do we have an electrical outlet on it or not. The electrical outlet, although there was no power to any of them, is I pushed and everybody agreed that we should start putting. I don't think all of them in the area have them, but at least on my property they do. Um, hopefully, as part of this, we've had a conversation with the PUD. In the past, they've made it darn near impossible to put electricity on these because they wanted it metered. And so building owners would have to have set up a separate uh, fuse box and a separate uh, meter so that somebody could plant, you know, put in Christmas lights once a year. I heard, last, we had a conversation with the PUD maybe three years ago, and they seemed more receptive to not doing that to us anymore. But that's why initially... None of this was done because besides having to have that would also mean you'd have to have separate wires because the street lights are on a flat B basis. But they wanted the outlets to be on a metered, which means that not only would you have to have a meter base and a panel separate, you also would have to run a completely different wiring back to said stuff. So the cost was like was just astronomic to do it. Well, maybe Michael will consider that. Hopefully. Yeah, maybe he has. I don't have any answers for you on that one. Okay. Um, I think some of the outlets are actually functional. Um, um, okay. I, 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 there, there are some outlets on the streets that work. They were part of a separate project as far as I know. So, but anyhow, go ahead. Sorry. So um, talk a little next. We'll talk a little bit about um, IES standards. This is what governs street lighting, pedestrian lighting. Um, the right of way for it, it, this is uh, this is stated in the public works design standards that we follow. That's its district standard. And <clears throat> this, I aggregated um, I, this is a table from Hillsboro, but it, it basically um, summarizes you know, very, very common standards for street lighting and uh, on different facilities. Um, there's there is a more specific light standards for sidewalks. This is generally the one used for collectors. I didn't put all the, so much on other tables. This is kind of a basic one. It's in terms of foot candles, if that makes any sense to anybody, um, pretty low light level. Uh, like a like a, a shopping center parking lot would have like three foot candles. Roads would be like half to one, maybe one and a half low. Uh, and lighting's just higher on the higher more traveled roads, the thicker roads. The more. So where do we where do we go from here? Um, there's, I mean, we can do kind of whatever we want. We have uh, about 20 acorn lights in the in the zone we right now. Um, so it's not a huge number. Probably half of them should be replaced anyway. Are you um, suggesting that we? Are we starting from the acorn light? No, no, no. I'm, I'm just saying that there's not, we're not committed. So we don't not have a lot, a lot of those that are new that, 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 you know, we're necessarily endeared to. Like you could, you could change it up slightly. You can, you can do some variations on what we have or, or add elements to it. Certainly, I think there's some. I think the acorn lights could be engineered. Um. The acorn lamp posts are aluminum, so they'll basically last forever. So, um, but one of my concerns is I, I know they use the metal halloid light bulbs right now, yes. which are not energy efficient and they are labor intensive for replacement of bulbs and such. Is there a retrofit kit, kit available for these lights so they could go? So they could there be. Are, they're really expensive. Okay. No, they're. I I just talked to Brandon the other day and he said the, the LED retrofits. With a new globe or about eighteen hundred dollars. Yeah. So you're talking about basically a brand new light. You could almost replace the whole thing. Yeah. About three thousand. Twenty eight hundred in that in the neighborhood of that. So it's eighteen hundred dollars to change the lighting kit. Or three thousand dollars to buy. Eighteen hundred. Eighteen hundred to luminaire and then it's about three grand for the whole thing. So that would would that eighteen hundred would that include the light sensor and all that or I didn't get into those kind of details. That's okay. just kind of generally what they're running into. 
I do think that that three thousand for the I think three thousand is that's just for the light fixture, not for labor to install it though, right? There, yeah, the labor varies, but it's probably four or five hundred dollars per standpoint. I mean, it's sixty percent, and if you have the labor to install it, we're still fifty percent of the cost. Uh, Seems pretty wide. Yeah, and you know, when you look at the older poles, though, when you, you know, the arms aren't functional, or in, you know, the that. Outer coated paint is faded and chipped off in places. You know, they don't. They don't look great. I don't. I don't know if they can be rehabbed or not. That's sort of what you'd be looking at if you just did the head repair. Still have the rest of it. That's okay. What do you pay for? So, so the street lights are all paid for by the, the city for for the power, but. Um, and, and it's based on a flat rate, and, I don't, and the city, I don't know if you know what the number is off the top of your head. You pay 10 bucks. Yeah, so, so you pay a flat rate and there's no meter. And, that, and that's why in the past it's been such a problem wanting to have more events and have, have electrical outlets because PUD has not resisted not having, having it as a flat rate. And so now, so then, so, then, so then you have to have wiring going back to transformers, electric panels, and meters. Lori? Yeah, I think um, I think the the thought was um, to have this committee pretty much um, you know review different styles so that we can come up with a standard that we move forward with, and then potentially, depending on cost, come up with a way if the committee were to make a recommendation as one of your goals to council to begin like a program for replacing the existing lights with the new standard over the next however many years, you know, get it in the budget so that we're, so that everything can be uniform within the downtown overlay at least. And then, you know, maybe we start investing in banners during holidays or, or lighting or things like that, but to just have the conversation so that we can get it teed up for potentially getting in the budget. Well, we're doing light, we're, we're replacing lighting now citywide with poles arms on them and they're all LEDs. They're either 40 watts or 90 watt lights. And yeah. you, you oh, noticed around town. That'd be exactly what we how we would approach this. We would move forward with a new standard and as as time and budget allowed we'd pick out the old ones and put in whatever new standard we can. Yeah. The LEDs are are vastly superior. I put them in my parking lots and I've mm -hmm. been extremely happy with them. Noticeable reduction in power consumption. But the bigger thing, and I would think for the city that would provide a real benefit is, it amazes me how often the bulbs go out on these things. Mm. I mean, they're supposed to be long life, you know, metal alloy, but they seem they, like they go out sometimes once a year. Mm -hmm. Some of the we, would, we wouldn't spec anything that had less than a, like a 10 year. No, oh, and yeah, well, on that, but on metal alloy, they're supposed to last longer, but for whatever oh, reason, right. they, they haven't been in some locations. Uh, and some agencies, um, Hillsboro's uh, one one that I refer to often. They've got a whole department that just does streetlights, um, but they've they've really taken ownership, and they actually have all their their lights are programmable, and at night are on a program to actually dim down, not just burning 100. percent Oh, so like at 3 a.m. when no one's out and about, they they, they drop they, down to 50. They actually ramp down. You know, oh, wow. ramp down. So they're they're kind of saving energy and wear and tear on their lighting, and then. And then there's other things you can do with sort of the the, the um, elements that you might want to add. There's now there's some poles out. There's some accessory attachments where they they can be set up to do a bunch of things, and then you kind of add it and take it down as you need it. That's kind of the latest thing. Is there an option though for these now to be LEDs so that we're not having to deal with the halide bulbs? Well, the, the metal halide's fine. I mean, it's it's they're no, we're not replacing. If they go out, they will be up to the LED. So you're not doing anything. Another okay. So the standard that we're going to choose, the new standard, would be LED. Which is which is problematic for these decorative lights because we really don't want to invest a bunch of money in a light to upgrade it to LED and then decide later, oh, we don't want the base or style, yeah. and maybe we want a new couple with it. So, so just just so you're aware. And I'd, I could try to get you the information if I had the socket size. 
but I believe that for somewhere around two hundred dollars, you can get what's like a corn cob. I think might not be the correct terminology, but it's close. Corn cob um, replacement, and it and I don't believe that they're very expensive. A couple hundred dollars. Now, now it's going to have a life, you know, like a like a fifty or a hundred thousand hour life on it, so it's not going to last forever. But that also might be something that could be considered transition on the these. Is, Upgrade yeah. Oh, okay. well, I, th I think that this is kind of more a bigger discussion. I mean, we've we've heard you talk about design standards and wanting to, you know, make the downtown area look consistent and nice. This is something that we've needed to do for a while. And really what we're coming here today to talk about is will this committee take up this particular topic and debate it, talk about what should be there in the future. You know, we can schedule interviews with companies that provide lighting fixtures and you can pro eventually provide a recommendation to council about what should be there not what can we upgrade because yeah. as we heard we can't hang baskets we can't do lights we don't have drip irrigation we don't have a lot of things that we could have that could really make the downtown much nicer and look nice in the winter and look nice in the summer and so right. you know i guess really what we're asking is you know does this committee interested in in taking this on for a while you might as well do a vote, but I see no reason not to. Yeah, I would like to. Do so there's 20 current lights right now. There's about 20, yeah. We have just, you know, again, we, we're adding these lights in based on this old standard. We just added two more down on East Columbia. And, uh, um, for a close match to what we have now. So I think it's, I think we're up to are, in this area. Are we, is there current plans to add more? Or, yeah, well, so, we've got. You know, we've got development proposals for uh, Northeast Third, uh, area of the corner, mm -hmm. which is in this overlay zone. So they'd be adding two more. Oh, well, they'd be adding three more of these lights. This block across the street is really gravel. Looking at planning and doing a multi use facility there on the corner. So that'd be like your front and center, you know, your doorway to your community mm -hmm. is going to be. Lot of street lighting on it. lighting yeah so i'd it's, say it's an opportunity to yeah. kind of set it in the right direction and then we can go back and kind of retrofit so so basically that whole that map at the beginning that whole zone would be governed by this standard well um, technically in the code the only place where these lights are required is east columbia and west first street and then encouraged on everywhere else it could change with your but, plan, yeah it could change and so, i guess our point is that like we would love to have this uh decided before we tell the dental clinic you know what type of acorn lighting to use um and we've got a little time on that but we'd want it hopefully to get it figured out this fall um by the end of the year would be great yeah um, i i went ahead and scheduled tentatively um a vendor who I've worked with in the past. They work for Hall of Fame, which represents a whole slew of different uh, lighting manufacturers. Um, and and uh, I've, I've known her for years. I mean, she's been in the lighting business a long time. And she could come in next month, uh, I think it's on the 18th, and do a you know a 30 minute presentation, bring some stuff in that you guys can look at, brochures. And she could get more into the nuts and bolts of the lights. Um, what, what other communities are doing, which I think is kind of cool to see. Um, there's some communities going away from having lights with globes in them. That's a maintenance issue. Um, the acrylic ones turn yellow. You've seen them, you know, you see those around town. They get this weird kind of a yellow tint to them. Glass ones get broken, they get full of bugs. Some communities are just doing away, away from that. Um, so, and then she can talk about the other. Uh, Elements that go on to the pool itself. So there's there's a lot of there's you know she can she can she can uh, get everybody up to speed on that if you want. I'll confirm. What clearance do you need if you've got hanging baskets or what? Do you need then put clearance or? Well, we just have to at this point we just need to vote. Do we want to have this as one of our committee? Sure, I'll Fox make I'll make a, I'll make a motion. We're not wiggling out what the details are. So I'll make a motion for the committee to undertake this project. I would second that. Okay. All voting. Aye. Aye. Thank you. So then we can wiggle out the rest. I haven't seen the light, Lynn. Thank you so much. I will continue to manage you through the light. 
This is um, sort of what McMinnville looks like in the. It doesn't show their lighting really. Anyway, they they kind of do a really mm -hmm. nice job. Winter. Lovely. I talked to a lady from the Historical Society, and she's trying to uh, like improve our Christmas lighting adventure and teaming up with community community club, and then creating neighborhood contests Ooh. for Christmas lights. It's fun. an incentive. Yeah, she she plans on going with that, Janet. I talked to her. It, so. it sounds fantastic. So I That's think great. this would just enhance that. Make great. it so much cuter in the winter. Yeah, it'll make it look nice. And there's, you know, a, uh, you probably don't ever notice street lights that much, you know, just in your daily activity. But um, now that you're on the sun, you probably will notice more. And and when you're in those downtown areas or, cities, uh, or in the older part of Eberton or Hillsboro um, types of areas, you will you can notice that they have different lighting. And, and there's, I mean, there's a million different styles. Independence, Oregon. I, was, I go down there a lot now. They have some cool downtown. I think to your point, or that you're talking about, there aren't businesses open after five, so we really don't have to be here when the lights are out. There could be. I know. I I like potential. It's going to be great. To your point, <laughs> you couldn't ever bring in more comfortable <laughs> business. You're going to build those too. A little safer. There's going to be one over there. Um, I do have some things I can hand out. Um, just, yeah, I, there's a nice little excerpt that um, we have Hillsboro come to. Yeah. 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 On color, color even. Well, that's a good read. Uh, they, they, they're really, they're really innovative and. Um, so, oh, I, they, they set a good example. I appreciate the innovation, but I wonder uh, what the commitment to, and do we have the manpower and the ability mm -hmm. to program said lights? So, you know, you always buy that fancy TV that does a lot of stuff, but nobody ever does the stuff. So I don't want to like make oh, an sure. investment if we don't have the team to, you know, I don't want to add burden to the city to put plants in, to put the drip system in, to program the lighting, et cetera, et cetera. Do we have that capacity? That would be something that we would have to talk through. I think the burden for any sort of uh, inner baskets, um, lighting, special lighting, holiday lighting, would have to be businesses that would have to buy into that and, and be you know, active participants in that. So should that be something added to this project? Is oh. to get the buy-in from businesses and how they would support a light bulb? Oh, absolutely. So absolutely. So if I are you suggesting that we might change development code to make drip baskets a requirement? You know, as far as as far as development. I now I know it's in the old town overlay. It's it's given as an option, but it's not required. Is that is that? Kind of what we're talking about, maybe, or is we we could talk about that. I mean, we are definitely going to look at the downtown overlay code as part of the fifty-year plan. Um, I don't know. I I mean, it's a topic for conversation okay. as we move through this okay. to yeah. to start thinking. A lot of those. moving parts to this, yeah. even yeah. though it seems like a small topic. It's actually it, it has it, it's got a lot of different stuff going on. Yep, it has long-ranging implications. Yeah. Um, just one thought I'll throw out there. We were talking about how it's currently, you know, lighting is only required in the immediate hardcore corridor. Just a thought. We might want to expand that to a to a greater area. Indeed. But not include the basket requirements or something mm -hmm. like that on the future, so that the light so it has the initial appearance of uniformity, but maybe not the additional burden. Correct. As we're in more perimeter peripheral areas. Old Portland Road. I think there's quite a bit of light on that, but not a ton. And then where those apartments are, the new ones down by the hill, I would think that there would be well, lighting this, there. Well, this is only for Old Town Overlay. This is just the Acorn decorative lighting standard, which is, they're not in the downtown overlay, in other words. What's the lighting requirement for those areas? That would just be our standard Cobra Head um, street lighting. So for Southeast 2nd Street, where the new apartments 
Yeah, they would follow our IES standards for those. So that chart that you saw, they'd be they very much. Would it would be your typical cobra head, just street light, not a decorative. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, on the street, and they're you know they're forty watt LEDs. Um, they do their type that they're probably type threes, so they have good distribution. Um, spacing may not be ideal there. I wasn't a part of the design of that, and. Uh, City did not have any expertise in bending lighting, or they didn't really require photometrics at that time, light designs, and so they kind of just got, I don't even know how they got past it. Anyway, um, you look at that much more closely now. You require photometrics on actually every application. Yeah. Yep. So, um, next question is, now we are moving on to our last topic, which is the all business spotlight. Something that we are you going to talk about, this? Isaac? Mm -hmm. Isaac? Are you talking about this? Oh, Isaac. So, some months ago, we uh, city had brought the idea of a small business spotlight to the committee. Um, we kind of wanted to get the ideas from the group about what we could do, what would be useful for businesses what we should be looking for, what's actually helpful to make sure that when we're writing these, we're not wasting uh, time and we're doing the most we can for our local businesses. Um, the committee had a couple of ideas. We ran a couple of small business spotlights. So um, we talked with the chair. She wanted us to bring this back for review again. Um, these are also something that, you know, if this committee wants to, they could take part in creating these and writing these, identifying the businesses, um, doing pictures, really defining which businesses they'd like to see in some outreach. Anybody, chair or group. Um, so anyways, this is the first one. Um, we talked with the antique shop across the road here. Um, I've included copies of the spotlights in your packet. And the second one was done a couple months ago and we interviewed a small, um, she does a uh, mental health counseling. Um, just local. Um, this is kind of where we're at with it. Um, without further input, we'll probably continue to do things like this, but we're hoping that the committee might take this part up as well, look at them, figure out if they think it's useful, give us some suggestions to improve them. So I'm open to this, and you and I chatted about this, where Susan, when she gets a business license, she sends it out. So I think that that would be first and foremost that we're included in as new businesses come in that we can go and have that chit chat with them and get this information for the newsletter. Would that be possible? Potentially. It seemed like we should have a form. Um, yeah, we, we have a form that we've done. We asked them some questions, you know, who are you? Where are you from? What do you like about Scott Poos? What's your business? But, you know, that's something we can bring in for a review as well. Um, you can look at it, make sure we're asking the right questions. This is something that uh, keep it local. They do this kind of business spotlight. Yeah, there's a lot of most most organizations do some kind of small business spotlight as a way to promote the local businesses. This blurb that is that her is she's writing that. Um, so this was based off an interview that our intern did with her. Um, it's also based off of the questionnaire. So usually we'll take the question, we'll go to them and give them the questionnaire. Say, hey, we're doing this thing. We want to try to promote your business. Is you know, would you be interested? And they say yes. We ask them to fill the form out, and sometimes we'll have a quick conversation about what they do, which depends on the type of business. And we've, again, we've only done this twice, okay. vastly different businesses. You know, one's brick and mortar antique store. It's been here for a long time, completely different business line. We've got a mental health counselor. Questions are different. What they do is different. How they talk about what they do is different. Um, but, and then, so then the intern types that up. Then we write up, yeah, then we write up the blurb based on the questionnaire. We you know, just kind of go, what's their business? What are they doing? What do they like about Scott Foods? What do they think the future holds? What would they like to see? One business per month. One business every quarter. Oh, wow, that's even less. And that's part of the reason we're coming here too, is that, you know, if, if there's businesses out there, if you want this more, maybe you can help. Well, what I was going to propose, sorry, bro. No, 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 you go. What I was going to propose is like nominating one of us to take this on as like a little personal project. No longer chair, so I'd be happy to do that. But So move. <laughs> I'll make a motion. 
So there's obviously so one spotlight, business spotlight per quarter. I think we could do it monthly. I mean, we we just as the city, we didn't have the bandwidth to do every single month. And so one of those things is that there's a lot of small businesses that potentially benefit. I think monthly, I think monthly would be perfectly fine. How many how many new business licenses do we get a month for not not for apartments or things like that, but for actual businesses with Okay. That's so, one a month. so so one a month and then we back feed a little maybe. maybe. That's still one a month. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's it's And then if one month we don't have any, we just do the business cool. spotlight on an existing company. You could do that. You could also use that as a forum for other things. I mean, you could talk about what's happening in the community. There's a lot of conversation here about what's going on. Nobody outside this room knows, frankly. Nobody that's a small business that's not in this room knows. Nobody that's in the community knows. Like This could not just be about small businesses, but it could turn into an economic development spotlight as well if you don't have a business. You could write an article about what's happening at OMIC or PCC. Mm -hmm. and one of the one or two of the big updates each month yeah in paper yeah i mean granted right this is one way we do outreach there's there's people who this and and get it every month and and this is their thing there's people who don't and they go to facebook but they're already there with omic they're already there with the county right they're following these groups because they care just go to facebook also this does yeah we we do post it that we have a newsletter i, I actually i actually think this could be very helpful for some small businesses because I've had businesses rent from me for five and 10 years. I've had somebody come up to me and say, you know where there's this in town? And I'm like, yeah, it's been there for 10 years. And people are oblivious because for whatever reason, if they don't come to that specific part of town, they're just not aware. So they, they don't bother to get on Google. They just assume that they need to go to St. Helens or Portland or Hillsboro for it. So I think this could be very helpful for not just new businesses, but, but for small. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if somebody else wants to do it. Like Robbie already told me that he's going to be a he's going to be a taskmaster. Yeah. Well, and she do it, but I don't. If you no, my, no, I just think it's a good. I think it's a it's a nice thing for the community. Well, and the other thing is, you know, we 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 can help with the copy. Like, if you identify the business, you do an interview, you do that, you write the copy. Right. We can still, and and it, it, this could change over time. It could turn into more than just a business spot. Like, I mean, I I don't know. Right, you get these things that have like, oh, this is the open property, or this is ever relating to economic development you could even have the company or the person write their own little blurb too yeah. and just yeah, she it. she did a lot of that this particular one she wrote a lot of this to us um we did we did change it and you can also contact i think paul vogel with the now with the small business resource center if you need inspiration or partner with them i feel like they'd have a lot of contacts and references no follow-up i know i know <laughs> But that the small business resource center are they underway yet or? Yeah, they are. It was in this update. They have twelve clients at this point. Twelve. Okay. Yeah, I don't know how many are SCEPI specific. Is it and, specific? and they have the the now the brick and mortar actual. In the John Gum building. Okay. Okay. Well, oh, their library. Oh, they'll move. Okay. Jason moved. Oh, we see the. Okay. Yeah, I think I met him. Isaac, I think that we did vote that I would take this one. We just have this term be key for a year and then we'll cap. Then you might want to do something. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see how it works out. So just so you know, the newsletter deadline, we need uh, all the materials by the fifth of the month, whatever that's going to be. She'll send me the copy and we'll we'll put it into our letter format for her. So I'm just gonna get with Susan and find out who the business is then for twenty twenty two and and meet them. Do you want do you want to see the form we done using? Are you good? The form. Super fun. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh so that's it. Unless somebody else has some more stuff. How, how would everybody feel if we would have just business people? 
I think Michael Curry. That that's the company's operation. We're not making contact. We need to them. I think that that would be good because we do need additional members, but that brings us to one of mayor's mayor. no, one of mayor's adventure posting. Yes, I know. Um, his agenda is making because we do spend a lot of time with the update. We have very little time as a, as a committee to actually accomplish something. So I think bringing in additional speakers is going to be cut into more and more time of our ability to. Your chair next month, so you can totally. You know, I'm gonna throw out an idea. I was just thinking about it, and I don't have a strong opinion on this, but um, we could do our updates and cut the number in half. And what we could do is we could alternate every other month. On and so, because a lot of the updates, there really isn't that much movement in 30 days. So we could do every other month on the updates, and then that might free up some time for some other stuff, be it lighting or other yeah. speakers. Maybe a more focused update that's really, really focused on Gaffney's economic development versus. Well, and that's. I mean, we want to know what the agencies are doing, right. certainly, but as it relates to economic. And that, but that's part of the reason why having one every month it might be too often because there may not be enough going on every month in Scout Foods. Do you want to limit their partnership? Are you suggesting splitting in half? So, like, three it could people be, would give updates or organization would give updates one month and three would give them the next? Or are you saying just like every other month would be everybody? Um, either or, whatever whatever the collective, the hive wants to do, and whatever's easiest for staff. Again, I don't want to lose that. If they, I don't. I'm gonna speak for you. So if Casey doesn't have an update, I still want Casey to come because I like right. the presentation. So, but I would want Casey to say, you know what, we don't have anything new, and so not to update. But I still want everybody to be here because then we want that brain power. So my suggestion was only to put it at the end, so you get the business done first, then you do the updates. And then that way, get the business done and then updates. You know, if Casey has a 20 minute spiel, but he's got a 130 meeting, he might have to shorten it. About what I'm gonna <laughs> right. Yeah, you know what? Like, what did you tell us last month? Don't tell it us again. That's got a few notes down. I'll have a lot more time to come up with something. Good job. Good job. <laughs> I always remember when I get here. Like, and if you want to get closer, I think that's what you're talking about. If you want to get something done. So, so do I. Some of the guest speakers, especially from the area, I was talking about earlier, we're not getting participation. We're asking for something like this. Those are the people that I want to target. And say, okay, there's a validity to what we're doing here, and our company will put in five thousand dollars. That's that's the other component. Just be, we're not a government agency. For an economic uh, best way to develop economic. You, as chair, will find the yes. visitors to the city. Yes. Okay. Oh, so the next meetings. Hey, I've lost my agenda. Oh, no, I found it. Uh, next meetings August 18th, or 15th, and October 20th. forward to it. 30 minutes for that. And we're going to cut the updates in half and have them at the end is what it sounds like. I think we'll just have them at the end and I don't know that we're cutting them in half. We're just making them like new updates relevant to economic development. Okay, just want to be clear on the record and you are not chair on next month. And this Lynn is given him a list of responsibilities. Thank you, Christine, for the last year. Mm -hmm.